as we come on the air tonight with the program Night Sounds. May I introduce myself? My name is Bill Pierce, and we come by your place on radio just about every night at this time. And I'm more aware than ever that we have such a mix of listenership from all parts of the world, cultures, backgrounds, nationalities, attitudes, age groups, that there's no way we could conduct a format to please everyone. But there is one common denominator that types us all. That is, most of us are dealing with some sort of pain, either inner lacerations or outer pain from surgery, diseases, accidents. Pain is common to all of us. In tonight's program, I've subtitled Dealing with Pain. Some come to terms with it, others become embittered by it, and then there are those who merely endure it, wondering if there's ever any equity in this life. Must there always be pain? Well, unfortunately, because of what happened eons ago in the Garden of Eden, when man and woman, newly created by God, decided that they might have a better idea, and they turned from him. That detonated pain in this universe. Tonight, we don't ignore pain. We acknowledge it. We don't enjoy it. But we do look at it from the standpoint of God's strategies and his sovereignty. And I've entitled our time together, Dealing with Pain. If you can endure pain's invasion in your soul and spirit and body, I just invite you to stay for these moments together. And if you can love God through it all, realizing that He is sovereign and He loves you, it will be a lot easier to endure it all. If there are any young people listening, I'd say teenagers, basically, those in junior and senior high school, I'm going to play a song with which we begin tonight by one of your favorite contemporary artists, Jackie Velasquez. She has a song here that's entitled simply Adore. And the significance of it is that we can adore God even though we are hurting. Excruciatingly. Let's listen closely. These moments are those of reflection and dealing with our hurts, our pain, and our suffering together. From the moment you open up my eyes, I've seen the world in a different light. From the dawn to the setting sun, I by all that you have done Adored, adored, adored Jesus, I adore you Ooh. Adored, 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 adored Jesus, I adore I lay my life before you, oh Lord. There's a union of two becoming one. Deep inside my heart, I know that I belong. You have given. Everything within me cries Adored, 
For you, I adore you. Songstress Jackie Velasquez on Night Sounds. And on tonight's program, my intent is to bring you comfort and hope and peace and some relief emotionally, spiritually, especially if you're enduring pain at this moment. In his beautiful book, Don't Waste Your Sorrows, Paul Bilheimer was saying that today there's a strong emphasis in certain religious circles which insists that the ideal spiritual life is one of unbroken joy, peace, material prosperity. And the impression is current that to be saved and filled with the Spirit opens a charmed life entirely trouble-free where all problems are instantaneously solved and where miracles never cease. According to some, a miracle a day is the norm. If a person doesn't experience constant supernatural manifestations, it's because he or she is subnormal spiritually. Something's wrong between them and God. And to these people, the spirit-filled life is one hilarious roller coaster picnic in the park. No one should ever become ill, or if he or she does, they should be healed immediately by simple, effortless faith. If they need money, all they need do is ask God for it, and the heavens open and down it pours in an acceptable time. If anyone does not prosper and live affluently, it's simply because he or she is not spiritually on the ball. And some may feel that this is an exaggeration, but really it illustrates the point. Facts indicate there is a significant measure of truth in this theology. Because it's true that few of us live up to our spiritual privilege, God would love to manifest his generosity and his miracle-working power far more than is normally seen. But I guess the question tonight is, is this philosophy in proper spiritual perspective and balance, or does it represent only one side of the coin? Because the other side is represented by the concept of the Christian life as a warfare spiritually, a battle zone against the enemy of the soul that really demands courage and sacrifice and and rugged self-discipline. This theology stresses the unavoidable weariness, toil, and pain that's sometimes encountered, the bitterness of conflict, the desperate days and grueling nights in darkness and distress, And Paul even says to Timothy, his young helper, Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Consequently, he's saying those words to you and me tonight. Take up your cross daily and follow me. That doesn't sound like a a party, does it? Mark 10.21 Then Jesus said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, 
and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up your cross, and follow me. So the other side of the coin is also represented by the record of the noble army of martyrs, whose blood has proved to be the seed of the church. It's represented further by the body of literature that has exalted and glorified the heroic courage, valor, self-denial, the high cost of discipleship, of disciplined Christianity. There's an old hymn we used to sing in Sunday school, as I recall, back in the Methodist Church in Collingswood, New Jersey. One of the first songs I ever remember hearing in church. And it reads, The Son of God goes forth to war, a kingly crown to gain. His blood-red banner streams afar. Who follows in his train? Who best can drink his cup of woe, triumphant over pain? Who patient bears the cross below? He follows in his train. You may remember the poetry of Amy Carmichael, too, who spoke and wrote from an invalid's bed for many years. She articulated the warfare ideal in her work, The Soldier's Prayer. I'd like to read it for you tonight. From prayer that asks that I may be sheltered from winds that beat on thee, from fearing when I should aspire, from faltering when I should climb higher, from silken self, O Captain, free thy soldier who would follow thee. From subtle love of softening things, from easy choices, weakenings, not thus our spirits fortified, not this way, went through crucified. From all the dims, thy Calvary, O Lamb of God, deliver me. Give me the love that leads the way, the faith that nothing can dismay, the hope no disappointments tire, the passion that will burn like fire. Let me not sink to be a clod, but make me thy fuel, flame of God. These words by Amy Carmichael and many of you who are old enough to recall the martyrs at the sands of the jungle down in South America. To the Alka Indians, Jim Elliot and his team, they suffered martyrdom when they went in joyfully to witness to the Alka tribe in the jungles. Each one of them was martyred by the Alka Spears. Where's the equity in all of this? Just before coming into the program tonight, I was reading of cruises taken by many ministries. We've even been invited to a cruise. And as wonderful as these are, they can be times of inspiration and joy and relaxation and I think that the soldiers of Christ do need from time to time to go behind the lines and to the areas where they can be refreshed and sustained and refurbished and strengthened and fed to go back to the front lines again. But we don't want to remain on the cruise ships to the Mediterranean or the Caribbean or to those far-off exotic places. We've got to come off the cruise ships, maybe even having learned something there, and to get into the battle zone again. Because Jesus said, The world hated me. They will hate you too. In this world you will find tribulation. That's the course of the soldier who goes to war. The front lines, the no man's land, the battle zone, the fire zone. It's not all darkness, though, because God does give joy and peace in the midst of it all. That's why such beautiful songs, such as this one, were written. 
I'd like to ask Bob Krogstad and the orchestra and chorale to sing and play of the peace that passes all understanding, furnished by our God so beautifully to anyone who asks. old hymns of the faith, Wonderful Peace. Bob Krogstad and the orchestra and chorus tonight, and you're in tune with the program Night Sounds. I'm Bill Pierce, very happily with you once again. The title of our program at this point is Dealing with Pain. And in the few moments we're together by a radio here, there's no way we could exhaustively treat this subject, especially for those of you who are enduring pain at this very moment. As you reach out to the God of all peace, about which the choir sang a moment ago, He will be there. Probably He won't heal you immediately. But as you touch Him in faith, in your own way praying to Him, in the midst of the pain, He will take you through it. He'll go with you, and He'll help you to bear it. He's promised to do that. I'll be back to the subject in just a moment. Taking a break here for a couple of seconds, may I remind you that this is Night Sounds and we continue after we go off the air. Through compact discs of the music of Night Sounds, 13 albums of vocal and instrumental music. Email nightsoundsradio at aol.com 
For those of you who'd like to correspond with us, delighted to hear from you. Our mailing address is Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. Tonight's program, Dealing with Pain. From the beginning, God promised both temporal and spiritual blessings to Israel as long as she was obedient. But through Adam's fall, all of us, in a sense, are slaves of the enemy because he possessed the power of death over them. But because Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary without human father, Satan has no legal right to touch him. When he illegally slew Jesus on the cross, for the first time in history, Satan legally became a murderer. This brought upon him the sentence of death. He is legally destroyed. Jesus Christ is the victor, and he will take us through the pain. Many of you tonight are suffering mental anguish, and it wouldn't surprise me that many are even considering taking his or her own life. If this is the case, I urge you to stop for a moment and listen. Don't give up Someone really loves you Don't give up Someone really cares Don't give up Someone really loves you And that someone is The Lord Don't give up Someone loves you Someone really loves you Don't give up Someone Someone really loves you. That someone is the Lord. Romans 5, verse 5. We are able to hold our heads high no matter what happens and know that all is well. For we know how dearly God loves us and we can feel this warm love everywhere within us because God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. God loves you more than you can ever imagine. Would you receive his love right now, this moment? Don't give up Someone really loves you Don't give up Someone really cares Don't give up Someone really loves you And that someone 
Let's remember as we take our leave of you tonight that suffering and pain triumphantly accepted slays the self-life and delivers us from self-centeredness and frees us to love. Thank you so much for sharing these moments with me tonight, especially those of you who are enduring pain. May God be with you in a very special way, take you through a great day to you tomorrow and a peaceful good night to all of you.